Welcome to part two of how to set up Manjaro for music production. We spoke about Cadence a little bit before and we spoke about setting up Jack. I'd like to talk to you about Katia now, which is a tool within Cadence. So when you first open Cadence, you'll have this screen and you'll see all of this stuff. And we, we spoke about the bridge as well, setting up the bridge. Tools is up there in the top bar. Katia is there, hit that. And then this is a really handy thing for dragging things between one program and another. And so the ones with the stuff on the right hand side is incoming and that the other side is outgoing. That's the direction of flow from left to right. You can see that I have got my audio capture coming from my audio interface all the way over to ZE OBS Mic 2, which I named for OBS. And without that, you wouldn't be able to hear my sound. And sometimes when I use a music program like Bitwig, for example, I'll show you what comes up there. So once Bitwig opens, Bitwig Studio is in here. And what I usually want to do with Bitwig is connect speaker outs to ZE OBS. And that gives me separate two channels for OBS. It's that simple. So we're not here to do that exactly right now. By the way, that on my screen there is the inside of my old MacBook Pro. <laughs> so I've got the inside of my old MacBook Pro inside of my inside of my new machine. <laughs> it's kind of like a steampunk city. <laughs> is that really all there is to Katia? I think that I think it is. You could, but you can do amazing stuff with it. Oh there's one more thing. See this pulse audio jack sync. That's the bridge I was talking about earlier. So if I wanted you to be able to hear what's going on on YouTube or on something else in my desktop audio that doesn't work with Jack, I would hit that and connect the front left to in and the front right to in, and then that'll be that. Done. Simple as that. Currently, it's going to playback, which means that I can hear it. But if I want you to hear it, I'd have to put it into here because that's where the recording is happening in OBS. Next thing I'd like to show you is, oh, uh, so they call this PAMAC. So I suppose I'm trying to go about it in a long, long-winded way. And PAMAC. Sometimes if you just type the thing, you get what you want. And the setup part of this is here. Preferences. And you need to... I'd advise you to have a longer password than four <laughs> letters, by the way. And I just put it in for a short time to be able to quickly move things around and do things. But give yourself a good password. Uh, so... This has changed since the last time I saw it. Third party. So this one here, enable AUR support. So by the time you watch this video, maybe this will have changed again, but it's always there, AUR. Uh, check for updates and, uh, you see, I don't really use PAMAC really that much for this sort of stuff. You can do flat pack and snaps as well, but as you can see, I don't have them turned on because I have no need for them because most everything is in the AUR if it isn't already in the official repositories. Over here on this thing here, so categories, groups, repositories. The categories are things like this, photo and video, music and audio. And um, it starts with the stuff that I've got installed already, ones that have a little bin beside them, or trash can as they call them in America. There's lots that I haven't installed yet. I never feel the need to have everything installed. I install things as I need them. I find it much more useful that way. But there's another section of here, um, which is groups and in groups here there's a pro music one way down here somewhere pro audio and there you can have a huge selection of all the most used pro audio stuff i've downloaded a lot from there but none of them are huge so it's quite easy to just hit install all and then try them all out and get rid of the ones you don't want no big deal so that's the aur but look i mean there's so many things in here ardor audacity cadence calf carla carla katarina guitar ricks helm synth hydrogen so much stuff there organs beat stuff and sequencer and reverb no, i have that reverb yes i do of course dragonfly it's a good reverb noise repellent <laughs> i downloaded that and I've, I've never tried it yet i must try that soon so there's loads so many things that different daws and different everything so once you've got the aur set up in pamac then you can type for things so say you want vst plugins you type in vst up there and it gives you a big list of all sorts of vst related stuff or nv2 is audio plugins for linux and there's lots and lots of them too i don't seem to have that many of them installed weird not yet i gotta go through them that's but the old ones and a lot of this stuff is going to be in the pro audio group that i showed you a minute ago in fact most of it so there's loads and loads to play with here. That's one of the great things about Linux. And there's things always changing and always updating. New things coming along and so much stuff is free. So the next thing you want to do, so say you wanted to download 
Bitwig. No, I'm pretty sure. Yes, Bitwig is in the AUR. I'm pretty sure that that's come up in there because I've got that installed on my machine. So I think you'll find that if you try and download Bitwig Studio, it won't be in the AUR and it won't be in the official repositories either. So what you're going to have to do is you have to download it. And once you have it downloaded, like I've got it right here. That's the deb file version. I'm going to delete this one so that I'll I'll just do it again. So if you right click in here beside that and open a terminal, that'll open it where you are. You'll have to get Pamac again actually. And make sure that you've got a thing called deb tap. And if you don't have it, then download that. And, and then what you do is deb tap and the name of your thing. Actually, I'll just go back here a little bit so that I can show you. If you hit tab when you're part of the way through, it'll give you options to which one you want to use. And with your arrow keys, then you can scroll between them. And that's the one that I would want. And I would hit return and that selects it and then return again, extracting package data. And so now you'll see what's going on here in a second. Package your name. I don't really tend to write anything in there. I did in the beginning, but I don't think it makes any difference because we know who it's from. Like I'm not sending this on to anybody else. So just on my own machine. So I just had to hit return after name and after license. It may take a few minutes. Please wait. Now, those warnings there, I don't think they really have any particular influence on this thing. And you're not going to lose much by testing it out. I've already tested this particular one out myself earlier and it worked fine. So it's handy that it gives you the warnings in red. Let me get bigger for you, I think. There you go. That's probably tiny. If you're watching this on a phone, that's probably tolerable on a phone, right? Now, so deb tap space and then the name of the thing that you want, which will end in a dot deb. They're files that are made for Debian systems. So let's close this and then up here we can see there's this one package tar dot zst and you double click on that. And I was wanting me to reinstall but I, I don't need to reinstall it because I've already done this earlier. So that's how you get a deb thing onto an arch based system. And I'm going to talk to you again about one more thing to do with the setup of your machine for well two more things about the setup for your machine. One is the CPU governor and the other one is the kernel itself. Now, the CPU governor, if you type in CPU power is the one that I use, and you can download it right in here. CPU power GUI, actually, because it's a graphic user interface. Unless you want to be doing the things on the command line, which maybe you do. And then if you look in here, the governor is on performance. When you first get it, it'll probably be on power save or one of those things. And then you change it to performance and click on apply up there. When you've changed it that'll give you a much more stable system check in on it again make sure that it's still set to where you did next time you reboot your machine because you might need to set the cpu governor again next thing is the kernel and manjaro actually has a kernel app like this thing here and you can see all these different kernels there's these rt kernels which are real time and real time would give you the most possible efficiency on making music stuff but they're not really recommended for security reasons because a rogue package could just come and take over your system, take over your CPU. I don't think it happens all that often, but it is possible that something could just hijack your system. And it could be just a bug in the system or whatever. So for the most part, I use what's called, I think, a preemptive kernel. And I think most kernels now can cope with that stuff. If you press F12 on Manjaro, you get this, a drop-down terminal, which is really handy. And if you do um, uname-a, Oh, I need to make this much bigger. You can't see that. And return. And it'll tell me this Linux Manjaro 5.11.22. And preempt that there. That ensures that your kernel is sufficient for doing the job that it needs to do. I don't know exactly what it does. I don't think you really need to know exactly what it does. But this is what I've heard. I've heard that this is the job for what you need. To keep up to date on your kernels is probably a good idea. So I haven't installed this new one. So I'll just hit install and that'll install the new one. And then I'll have to reboot the machine and it'll get it up and running. I wouldn't go to the experimental one. I think the experimental one has still developers and stuff like that are working on that one. So 512 is probably the one to go for. I've got a couple because sometimes there's a conflict between different parts of your system when things get upgraded. And uh, it's nice to be able to roll back to the previous kernel because sometimes that still will work with the software as it updates for a while until things catch up with each other. 
Another thing to say about Manjaro is that it's based on Arch. It's a rolling release distro, which means that things might actually get into conflict every now and then in terms of the software. I haven't encountered it, but I've heard that it does happen. No, actually, I've encountered a little bit of it. One thing was to do with the compositor and how stuff looked down here. And in fact, the whole bottom bar disappeared and I, I had to reinstall it. I had to find a different version of the thing. This, by the way, isn't the normal bar or dock or whatever the hell they call it in Linux. This is um, Latte, Latte Dock. And I find it really great because you can have all these different docks. And if you press on the super key or Windows key and tab, it'll bring you to a different one. So this is the one that I've set up for video stuff. And you can see down here that I've got different stuff in the dock. I've got Caden Live, Olive. I'm not really using Olive much at the moment, but I, left it, I put it there to try it out. OBS is in there and this one. This is my one for music, which means that I've got these things on. One small issue that I've had with Traction Waveform is that when I try to put Traction Waveforms, one of these, down there, it just shows me this stupid X thing. I'll show you. The Waveform 11, you can see that it's, it's got a nice thing there. And when it comes down here, it gives me this X. I really don't know why that happens. Maybe somebody can help me in the comments down there. Because I'd like to keep it down here, but I can't because I just can't be looking at that stupid X. Plus, I'm not sure that that X will launch it. I think that's just something that holds it there or something. So that's it. If you find that you really do want to brave the real-time kernel, then the best thing to do is to have it on a system that's not connected to the internet in any way. I hope that you find that much easier than I did when I first got into Linux. I hope that I can be helpful to you to get set up and running an awful lot faster than I did. That's pretty much everything you need, I think, to get set up. If I'm, if I'm missing something, let me know down there. There's one more thing, actually, about Linux that you might <laughs> keep saying. There's one more thing. One more, just one more thing. Uh, okay. Another thing, do you know you can also run Windows VSTs on Linux if you can figure out how. I haven't figured it out quite yet, but I'm about to figure it out quite soon and hopefully I'll get back to you on that one. Up to now I think they've had some latency issues, but um, I see there's a thing called yeah, Bridge, which might actually have sped up the whole process. And you use another program called Wine. And I've managed to get Wine installed and I've managed to run a couple of things, but I haven't managed to get the VSTs to come into the DAW. So that's the um, next thing on the adventure. So Shine, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you can set up your Linux fast. And I'll see you soon. My name is Breno Ruig. And this is Lismore Music. And that down there is the subscribe button and a bell. Smash the subscribe and ring the bell. Or smash the bell. Smash, smash. Shine, Sloan Gafool. Bye-bye.